All right, guys, today we are taking a look at uh, putting radicals in simplest radical form. Okay, uh, first things first, a radical is uh, a square root symbol is an example of a radical, okay? Uh, that is the radical symbol. Uh, we have other radicals other than square roots. We will talk about some of those other ones later. Um, so the, the symbol itself is called a radical. And the number that you would put under there is called the radic hand. Uh, there's usually, there can be a little number right there that changes the root from a square root to something else, like a cube root or a fourth root. And, and we're going to talk about those uh, at a later date. Uh, but that little number is called the index. Okay? Uh, so the key to simplest radical form is that you have to have the smallest number possible underneath the square root. Okay, so you should have the smallest number possible under the root. Uh, and the way that you do that is by trying to get rid of all of the perfect squares underneath the root. Okay, basically, here's the, here's the way that you're going to do this. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to, we have a rule with square roots. They follow some of the same rules as exponents, okay, because a square root is really just an exponent. The square root of A times B is the same thing as the square root of A times the square root of B. Okay, those are the exact same thing. Okay, so knowing that, uh, this allows us to uh, break a square root down into smaller pieces. So keep that specific rule in mind, and we should be fine. So here's how this should look. Uh, we have two ways that we could do it. One is by utilizing a factor tree and one is by utilizing your knowledge of perfect squares, okay? So with a factor tree, you would really just make a factor tree of this number. I'd go 36 and 2, 6 and 6, and 3 and 2 for each of my 6s. And then the way that I would write 72 is not, the, not 3 to the second times 2 to the third. I would actually write 2 to the second times 3 to the second times that leftover 2. Pause and think for a second about why I might write it that way as opposed to 2 cubed times 3 to the second. Well, the reason I want to do it that way is because of something that we looked at last chapter. Remember how we talked about that the square root of a number squared is just the number, that these basically cancel each other out? Well, now, if I have it written like this, I can change 72 to 2 squared times 3 squared times 2. And then I can use the rule above to write it as three individual square roots. And two of those square roots, I can simplify to just the whole number. This is 2, this is 3, this is 2. And I get 6 times the square root of 2. Go ahead and in your calculator check 6 times the square root of 2 and go ahead and check the square root of 72. If you type both of those things in, you'll get the same thing. Now, the other way that you can do it is if you know uh, perfect squares that multiply into 72, you could just write it as a product of a perfect square and a number. Perfect squares are numbers that come from a whole number squared. So those would be 4... 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 81, uh, oops, I missed one, 64, 100. The, those are all of the ones that you have between 1 and 100. So the other way that I could do this is I could just rewrite 72 as the square root of 36 times 2 because 36 is the biggest perfect square I can think of that goes into 72 then I can write it as two separate square roots, and then I can write six times the square root of two. I get the same answer as above. I think the perfect squares method is faster, 
um, but sometimes it can be hard to come up with uh, the right number there. So what I want you to try to do is try doing uh, these next two on your own, pause and then come back. Maybe try to use each method once, pause and then come back. All right, so I'm assuming you have done that. Uh, the first one, see, I'm not even really sure here what the biggest perfect square is that goes into 448, so I'm gonna use a factor tree for this one. I get two and 224. I get two and, uh, let's see, 112. I get two and 56. I get 2 and 28. It's kind of taking up a lot of room now. 2 and 14. And 2 and 7. Okay, so again, I'm going to circle these in pairs. So I know what pairs I've got here. I've got 2 squared 3 different times. Times a leftover 7. Put that under my square root. I'm going to kind of skip that middle step here. The square root of each of those two squares is going to be 2. The square root of 7 I can't do without getting a decimal. And then I get 8 times the square root of 7. Okay, so that one I did with factor tree method. Next one I'm definitely going to be using uh, perfect squares method because I know that 100 is a perfect square and it goes evenly into 300. So then I get the square root of 100 times the square root of 3, which is 10 times the square root of 3. So again, I think perfect squares method is probably the easier method, but only if you can think of a perfect square, which I couldn't do very easily for that first one. So factor tree method is a good one to fall back on.